Okay, we're going to be taking a look at The Spanish Road, which is a solo game about um, the Spanish logistical effort um, through the years um, of the Thirty Years' War and slightly before um, from C3I number 37, which is the most recent C3I magazine. This is a design by Daniel Hernandez Iniesta. Um, it looks great. Here we can see the, the map, I guess you would call it, the board, um, done in that style. Um, so, like I said, this is a solo game about trying to get the Spanish army from Spanish Lombardy all the way up through Central Europe to Spanish Flanders um, and all of the logistics and conflict that that entailed uh, to do it. So, um, yeah, let's just jump into it and we'll play. It shouldn't take too long. I should be able to get this done pretty quickly. Um, but there's some there's a lot of replayability here, which I think is kind of cool and some interesting systems as well. So to start with, at the start of the game, we have to pick one of the three Spanish leaders that we want to attempt this task with. Um, I figure we'll just go in chronological order. So I'll right now play uh, the Duke of Alva, um, who, as you can see here, was active, was alive from 1507 to 1582. Um, so we're talking about kind of the wars of religion era, I guess, with him. Um, and so based, and then there's two other choices. There's uh, Spinola and Ferdinand, Cardinal in Infante Ferdinand, I believe his name is. Let's make sure I get this correct. Uh yeah, Infante Ferdinand. So um, they each have, so each of the leaders has their own unique characteristics, which is kind of cool. Um, so for example, you can see here, the number of dots represents the battle value of the Spanish army or of the leader. The number in the um, castle icon represents their siege ability. So you can see the Duke of Alva is better at fighting enemy armies than he is at besieging. And Spinola, uh, Ambrosio Spinola uh, is better at sieging than he is at fighting. And then, of course, uh, Cardinal Ferdinand here, he is uh, not so good at either. However, he does have this little black one, and his specialty is that he can, uh, the Spanish tercios, uh, um, he, more uses of them. And we'll talk about what that means uh, as we go. So um, I figured we'd just do the, uh, the, the first game here that I'm playing of this with the Duke of Alva. Um, and he's going to start, the Spanish army is going to start in Lombardy here with him. And the Spanish army is going to have a strength of seven at the start of the game. Um, the game ends either when the Spanish army gets to uh, Spanish Flanders or the Spanish army's strength is reduced to zero um, or when time runs out. Um, and so uh, based on how much time you give the Spanish army to accomplish this task, that will determine the difficulty uh, of the game. So you can see if you want a hard difficulty game, uh, you can do 10 weeks, a medium difficulty game, 12 weeks, which is what I'm going to do just to learn it. And then if you want an easy game, you can do a 14 week campaign there. Uh, this track is also going to uh, show you the Tercio Momentum markers. This allows the Spanish player, i.e. me, to do uh, some other things um, during the course of a turn, mostly revolving around die rolling. And then here's the map. So uh, the spaces in the map, it's a point to point map. They are marked by connections. The yellow uh, yellow connections with the dots are Alpine connections. So you're walking across the Alps. Um, that will trigger attrition rolls. You've also got regular connections here. Um, and so the route you take to get to Flanders uh, is going to be defined by how difficult the terrain is and also where enemy armies are gonna show up. And also um, some of these uh, besieging values here. Um, and then all these numbers you see on uh, the, in the green box here are going to represent the movement of enemy armies. At the end of the turn, enemy armies are going to uh, move according to a d6 roll between some of these four, um, places. And if you move the Spanish army where there's an enemy army, you have to have combat, potentially um, defeat them or lose. Uh, and you, while all of this is going on, you are also trying to build the Spanish road. Uh, which is what these markers are for. Once you've built the Spanish road, those give you a lot of advantages in terms of um, getting new reinforcements for the Spanish army and so forth. So um, the first thing that needs to happen uh, at the start of the game is we need to choose our leader. We've done that. The next thing that needs to happen is set up all the markers while we've done that. The third thing that needs to happen is we need to see which uh, random area is going to be empty of enemy armies at the start of the game. So we're just going to roll a d6 and we roll a 4. So that means Savoy here is actually not going to have any enemy armies. So what we do now is we take all the rest of the enemy armies and um, we randomly distribute them. Uh, there should be, there's five of them and we are going to distribute them. Uh, we will randomly place one in Alsace. We will randomly place one in Baden. It's there. Uh, we will randomly place one in Lorraine. That's there. We'll randomly place one in Württemberg and the lower Palatinate. 
which is there and there. And then we flip these over to see which of these armies they are. It looks like there we've got an Italian army in Württemberg. We have got a Protestant army in Baden. Got a Protestant army in the Lower Palatinate. Alsace has a Protestant army, and these, I think, are going to be the Swiss in Lorraine. That is correct. Okay, so these are the, uh, the armies that are going to be uh, marching uh, against us. Um, potentially every turn. Now, it's quite nice in this first game that I got most of the armies here to the north because that's going to give me a lot of opportunity to move through these places and hopefully construct the Spanish road. And in fact, because there's no army in Savoy, which we got pretty lucky there, uh, I'm thinking that my first move is probably going to be to Savoy. Siege down, siege this down, build the Spanish road, and so forth. So, um, okay, so that is the um, that is the end of setup. Um, and now the first thing that happens at every turn is the diplomacy phase. This potentially means that there's revolts or enemy armies that appear on the map, but we don't do it on turn one. So we can skip that and go to the event phase. And in the event phase, we roll a d6 to see what happens. And I rolled another four. Uh, the four event is Spanish engineers led by Gabriel Rebellon work efficiently. Apply a plus one to the route to Flanders operation die roll. Okay, so that's good. We got a good event uh, here at the opening of the game. Um, I, let's see. So that is going to be, uh, I think it's a good event. Um, yeah. Plus one to the route to Flanders operation. Okay. So this is, I believe when you build, um, the Spanish road. Yeah. Yeah. The Spanish road construction table. So, uh, that's cool. So now we move into the meat of the game. That's the operations phase. This is where every turn you are going to get two operations as the Spanish player. And you've got uh, a bunch of different options to choose from. I, I kind of wish, so it's in the rule book here. I kind of wish there was a player aid that came with this. And I'm sure someone will make one online. It would just be nice to have all these charts in one spot instead of flipping through the book. But it's what we got, so we're going to roll with it. So of the operations you can take, you can choose to reinforce the Spanish army. You'll roll a die. There's some modifiers. Potentially, you will increase the strength of the Spanish army. You can move the Spanish army. Moving the Spanish army might incur attrition if you're coming across an Alpine connection there. Um, some spaces have a logistics value. So this would be, uh, like here, for example, this is the siege value. This is the logistics value. When you leave a space with a logistics value, um, you must roll a die and it's possible your move is canceled. Uh, this represents a die roll modifier and you are trying to get three or more. So as you can see, going to Savoy first, trying to leave Savoy, um, we would be having to roll a five or a six in order to march out of Savoy. This represents sort of the resistance of the Savoy. Um, uh, the, I guess the Savoy, I think that's how you would say people from Savoy, um, to helping the Spanish army move. Um, so the other option we have is we could go to the Swiss Confederacy here. You can see that the logistics value is only one. So it's probably more likely that we would be able to leave Swiss Confederacy when we want to. However, we do have to march across this um, this path here, um, that would be, um, that would incur attrition. Um, and so we might lose forces there. Now, the other thing to consider here is Tyrol. And I believe if you build the Spanish road in Tyrol, um, when you roll for reinforcements, no, uh, there's, there's some modifier for having control of Tyrol. Yeah. So when you're building the Spanish road, if you control, uh, if you're building in Tyrol, um, you get a plus one. Um, so that might actually, so it may be worth it to go here this first turn because I'm getting a plus one to build here, plus another plus one for the event I rolled to try and build some of these Spanish road markers. And the, what, the reason you want to build the Spanish road markers is that when you take reinforcements, the more Spanish road markers you have on the map, the more likely you are to succeed um, at getting those reinforcements. So sign of some early choices here. Do we go the easy route to Savoy and potentially get bogged down and stuck there for a while? Or do we go to try to go to Tyrol and... Uh, and uh, build the Spanish road? Uh, that's the question. Either way, we're gonna have to pass through a spot where we're gonna need to either siege or assault a fortress. Um, and so, <sighs> that's the question. I think my general inclination here is to go to Savoy uh, and do that first. So, um, so move is an operation. Um, you may also uh, do a battle operation. So if I enter a space with an enemy army, we would battle. And this is where we would add up the number of dice you get would be equal to the number of pips on your leader plus the strength of the Spanish army. Uh, and then the you would roll a number of dice for the enemy army equal to the number of pips on their counter. And there's an interesting combat system here, which we'll get to when I get into a fight, which I'm sure will happen. Um, the other operation you can do is you can siege a fortress. 
Um, and you have to do that before you can leave. You're not allowed to leave a space um, until you have taken out the fortress. Um, and then finally, the last operation is uh, you can uh, build the route to Flanders. Um, if you are in a region with no enemy army and whose fortress is under your control, you can attempt to build the Spanish road. So with all of that being said, I think with my first uh, activity here, we are going to uh, take a move action with the Duke of Elba, and we're going to move from Lombardy to Savoy. That's my first operation. My second operation is going to be some siege activity, um, and I have two options here. I can assault the fortress. That would be sort of a battle against the fortress. The, the fortress will roll two dice for each val number in the fortress, so it would roll four dice against me, and I would roll... Um, my strength value plus the leader's siege rating. So as you can see, the Duke of Alva has only got a one siege rating. I'd be rolling seven plus one, I'd be rolling eight dice. So I'd be rolling twice the number of dice. In this game, to score hits, you need to roll fives or sixes in pairs. So that means you can either roll two fives, you can roll two sixes, or you can roll a five and a six. And for each pair of those things, you will score a hit. In order to take the fortress, I must do more hits to the fortress than it does to me. So there's a chance I might take losses, but if I can do more hits, I'll just take it. The other option I have is to do a, a lay siege to the fortress. This just automatically uh, gives me control of the region, um, but I must automatically lower the, uh, lower the strength of the Spanish army by the value of the fortress. So you get a guaranteed thing for guaranteed losses, or you can take your chances. I think in this particular case, I'm going to take my chances. So we'll roll for the fortress, we'll roll four black dice, and just to see how this works. Let's see, this could be a bad idea. And maybe the designer, if he's watching, can tell me if this is a bad idea. But I feel as though, because he is a better battle commander and less good of a siege commander, that I will take my chances uh, with this. So I'm going to roll four dice for the fortress. This is, I guess, typically technically simultaneous, but we'll do it one at a time. And this is what they rolled. So they did get one hit against me with these two fives. Uh, so I need to do two hits at least, but I get seven dice plus one for his siege value. I get eight dice. So let's collect our eight Spanish dice in Spanish colors and give these a roll in the dice tower. One of those white ones, I think this one, did not get dropped in. It's hard to do this on camera. Okay, so what did we get? We got a pair of sixes here. We got a pair of fives here. And this leftover six doesn't count as anything. So we got the two hits we needed to beat them. So we take a hit to the Spanish army, but we do actually conquer the fortress. And when we conquer the fortress, we place a control marker uh, in the region. Uh, I control the fortress for the rest of the game. Um, so let's take a, a control marker and put it here over. So we've taken control of Savoy. That was my second operation for the turn. I moved, I did some siege activity. We took control of Savoy, that's great. Um, and now it become, now it's the end of the turn. Um, so after that, we go to enemy movement. So for every single army that is not located with the Spanish army, we roll a d6 and move to the region that the d6 indicates based on the number on the terrain here. So I'll, roll, I'll do that off camera so you don't have to see me roll five times, but uh, we'll come back and I'll show you how the armies have moved. Okay, so here's how some of the intricacies are going to work. I just rolled for Württemberg, and I rolled a six. So this um, Italian army is going to move up this direction towards Baden. And when you get an army that moves into a space with another army, it actually forms what is called a coalition army. So these two markers are gonna get replaced with a coalition army like that. Um, and obviously that's a lot more dangerous <laughs> because the Italians have just joined the Protestants uh, in Baden to form that army. And that just happens randomly. And you get to choose the order that the armies move. Um, and I thought maybe you know, maybe that was the wrong move, but it's very likely that early on with a start like this that all those coalition armies were going to form. Now, that coalition army is not going to move this turn if it's formed. Um, and if a coalition army would move into where there's already a, a, an army, then it just doesn't move. And this opposite is true too, I believe. So it doesn't specify what happens if an army uh, moves in where there's already a coalition army. Um, it seems to imply maybe they can coexist, but that doesn't really make sense. I'm... I'm going to assume, it tells all the other things. If this coalition army would move here, 
it would it would not move at all. And if uh, the two coalition armies would move against each other, they wouldn't move at all. And if there are both coalition armies are on the map and one would form, the move doesn't happen either. So I have to assume that uh, that armies can only exist in one spot at a time. But I could be wrong. I mean, the rules don't say that. It's just kind of interesting. Yeah, as far as I can tell, that there can only ever be one army in a space based on what the rules are sort of implying. So we'll see what happens. So now I get to choose the next one, and you can see here. Let's maybe choose the lower Palatinate. No, let's choose let's choose Lorraine. Let's see what happens with Lorraine. Lorraine rolls a four. That is going to have this Swiss army come here and form another coalition army like that, which is scary. <laughs> um, but see, now, now the one that I haven't moved is the lower Palatinate, and if I roll and I roll a three, that would imply that this comes down here, but I don't think you can have two armies, so I believe it will just stay in the lower Palatinate. So while we have sort of uh, coalesced the forces, these are quite dangerous, um, given the number of dice they're going to roll. They're going to roll seven dice against me. Um, anywho, that is the enemy movement phase, and then we uh, would check victory if I've made it to Flanders. I have not. Um, so then we go to what's called the Te Deum phase, which is where the church announces support for my goal to reach Flanders. Um, I advance the turn marker one space towards the zero box, uh, and then that would be down here. Boom. So one week has gone by. Okay. So there is one thing here that, um, that I want to do differently, um, from what I did. And that is, I want to use the tercios. So there's four ways that you can use the tercios. Remember the tercios are here. We started the game with three of them. So you've got three uses per game. They can be used to once per turn, reroll dice. They can you be used to perform one additional move operation. Um, in a battle or a fortress assault, you can reduce the number of hits received by the Spanish army by one, or increase the number of hits that you do to an enemy, enemy army or fortification by one, or you can apply, apply a plus one die roll modifier um, to building the Spanish road. Now, remember at the beginning of the turn, I had that plus one modifier from the event. So what I really want to do is try and build part of the Spanish road in Savoy. So what I should have done is I should have used my Tercios at the beginning to move. Then I would have done the Siege Operation against Savoy, and then with my final action, because remember the move was paid for by the Tercios, um, I would have wanted to build the Spanish, uh, the Spanish Road, because I'm at such an advantage on this turn. So let's do it that way. So for my final operation, obviously the enemy movement uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't affect anything here. So I need to roll a three or more um, to flip this control marker to its Spanish Road side. Um, and the uh, modifiers for this depend on where I'm doing it. So there are positive modifiers in Tyrol, and there are negative modifiers in other places along the map. Um, however, in this turn, I did get the uh, good engineering event, so I am getting a plus one to this roll. So I uh, need a, a three or higher, which becomes a two or higher. I just need to not roll a one. Famous last words. I rolled a four, so that's good. So I flip this control marker over to the Spanish road side. I've built a portion of the Spanish road. This is good because when I need to reinforce the Spanish army, it's more likely to succeed. So that is the end of turn one, the first week. Uh, we will move into turn two. Um, I'll play through some of that, and I'll bring you back to the action um, to show you how it's going. I think for my next turn... Um, so it's interesting because franche Comte is very easy to get to or Franche Comte, Comte, um, very easy to get to. I won't suffer attrition. However, I would be within striking distance of this coalition army, which could be very bad. The Alsace-Lorraine region is very difficult to leave and very difficult to siege as well. Um, and building the Spanish road in Franche Comte, Lorraine, or Alsace, any of these three spaces are all at a minus one. So maybe the smart play here is to go to the Swiss Confederation if I can successfully leave here. Uh, but we'll find out. Okay, so the first thing that happens in a new turn that we didn't do on turn one is the Burgundy loyalty check, the diplomacy phase. We roll a d6 and see what happens. We rolled a three. When you roll a three, there is no effect. However, some of the other things uh, that can happen from this Burgundy loyalty check, uh, you might get an enemy army appear here. Um, you might get a revolt in Franche Comte, uh, and that has uh, some negative effects um, on movement and, and so forth. So luckily this turn, there's a 50-50 chance that Burgundy remains loyal. Burgundy remains loyal, nothing going on there. Knowing that, I probably actually don't want to go there. So the decision to move across the Alps to the Swiss Confederation is probably a good one. Uh, now we need to roll for a random event for the turn, turn two. And we rolled a five. There's a revolt in the Holy Roman Empire, 
We roll a die for each Protestant enemy army or coalition army in the lower Palatinate. Well, we do have a Protestant army in the lower Palatinate. Um, also Württemberg and Baden. Nothing in Württemberg, but we do also have a coalition army in Baden, okay? Um, we roll for each of them. Um, so let's start for the one in Baden. I just need to not roll a six, okay? I rolled a one, and let's do the lower Palatinate. Uh, I rolled a three. So if I roll a six on either of those roll, the Spanish army value goes down, presumably uh, because they're putting down uh, revolts um, of some kind. Okay, so that was our event, and now we do our operations. Like I said, I am going to um, try and move from Savoy to the Swiss Confederacy across this Alpine Pass. Um, in order to do that, I need to make a logistics roll, um, the, and that is a three or higher, however, minus two, uh, minus two because of the logistics value of the space, however, plus one for each Spanish road marker that you've built. So it's really, in reality, a minus one. So I need to roll a uh, four or better. And let's see if I can do that. I rolled a one. So I, unfortunately, the move has failed. Um, so I will not be able to uh, move this turn. And because I was trying to move across the Alps, I also need to make an attrition roll as well. This one, again, um, so this one, uh, you want to roll low. Um, unfortunately, the Alps value here is plus one. So we're adding plus one to the die. And I rolled a four, that becomes a five, that sucks. Um, so reduce the strength of the Spanish army by one because of attrition. And unfortunately it was attrition that I could not escape because I couldn't get across the pass because of the logistics value. So we've encountered bad weather, poor supplies, the army is lazy, who knows. So that was my first attempt <laughs> at trying to get out of here. Um, I'm gonna try moving again. And so we'll roll both of these dice together. Uh, the red one will be my attrition. The black one will be my, uh, my army roll. Okay, so uh, the attrition roll loses me another strength in the Spanish army, which is not good. However, I did make the roll. So here's the attrition roll. That becomes a, a uh, five. So I lose um, three to five. You lose one strength. But my movement roll is a three. Um, Oh no, my movement roll is a three minus one, <laughs> uh, which is a two, so no move is made. So the Spanish army spends this entire week getting bogged down and losing manpower here in Savoy. Ugh, that sucks. Okay, well, that was turn. That was week number two, and I'm stuck in Savoy yet another turn. Thankfully, the armies are far away, but I really need to get out of here. Um, I would really like to get here before an enemy army gets here. That would be ideal. Um, so yeah, we go to uh, enemy army movement and we just keep doing this. We, we, every turn is pretty short and I will come back when something important has happened. Okay, so we are uh, in the fourth week of uh, the Spanish campaign to get to Flanders, and here's kind of what's happened. The coalition army moved down from Baden to the Swiss Confederacy. That um, really dissuaded me from trying to move there. Additionally, it cost two, it cost all of my operations to move last turn because of bad weather. So I instead chose to do the op take the other route, basically. I didn't want to face bad weather and a coalition army. So I went from Savoy to Franche-Comté. I made, I was able to successfully make the move. Uh, and then there was an army here. There was a Swiss army here that I, uh, that popped up that I defeated. Unfortunately, during the enemy movement phase, um, a Protestant army from Lorraine moved down. And so now at the start of my turn, I must attack them, uh, in order to, uh, in order to get rid of them. Um, it must be a battle. So I'm a little nervous because I'm down to four strength in the Spanish army. So I'm going to be rolling uh, six dice for my hits. And they're uh, going to be rolling six dice. So it's an even fight. And I'm not, I don't feel great about that. I do have tercios, which is nice. Um, so I unfortunately rolled one hit. That was a pretty poor roll. Um, they are also going to be rolling six dice. Oof. I don't like this. And they rolled uh, one hit as well. So in the event of a draw, the enemy army would win the battle. So that's not good. Um, I can use my tercios to reduce the hits received by the Spanish army by one. Um, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to use my tercios, um, to basically cancel the hit that they got. So I won the battle cause, uh, they got one hit. 
So we're going to remove this Protestant army, um, and we are going to be alone in Franche-Comte. Now, I have a decision to make. Do I want to try and build the Spanish road here? Um, it's minus one, and I need a three or more. That would be really dangerous because I'm now sort of between two coalition armies, and that could be really bad. The other option is trying to restore some manpower uh, to my army. Uh, I can do that with the reinforcements. Um, that would be, I need a three or higher, but I am one, two spaces away from Lombardy. So it's minus two to the die roll. So I would need a five or higher. Um, it's more likely that I'm able to build the Spanish road. Hmm than it is to get reinforcements, but reinforcements are more useful. All right, well, I'm gonna try and build the Spanish road. I need to get that built, and ideally, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, none of these armies move against me, and I can then kind of beeline it for Flanders. That would be, that would be my hope. Um, so, we're gonna roll to see if we can build the Spanish road. I'm minus one, I need a three or higher, so I need a four or higher. I rolled a five, that's excellent, that's really good. So we are, have built the Spanish road from Savoy to Franche-Comte. And that is uh, the end of the fourth week. Now let's see how the armies go. I think the one I want to do first, it's 50-50 for both of them. The one I want to do first is probably that one. Because if this army can't move or moves away, that's better than this army moving in and then being stuck with it being threatened by this one. So let's roll for the army in Alsace first. It rolled a one, and naturally that means it comes down here to face me. Now we roll for the coalition army in, in the Swiss Confederation. It rolls a three. That would mean it would try and move in, but you can't have two coalition armies in the same spot. So <laughs> the worst of all worlds has happened. And here we are. So on the next turn, my first operation has to be to attack that army. And unfortunately, I'm only going to be rolling five dice to their seven. Um, so we might need the Spanish Tercios to come through for us again. Let's see how it goes. Naturally, I got the worst possible result you can have in this particular situation. I got the Franche Comte Revolts. I put the Revolt marker in the region. Movement through the region is blocked this turn. Remove a Spanish road marker from the region. This is terrible. Absolutely terrible. So that goes away. Uh, what a waste. What a waste. Uh, now, the revolt. Um, do not make any additional Burgundy loyalty checks for the rest of the game. Leave the revolt marker in the region as a reminder. So, uh, yeah, so this is the last time this happens. If I'm already in Flanche Comte, I may end the turn or continue, uh, continue playing this turn by rolling a die at the risk, at 50 50 risk of losing a point of army strength. Well, I think that choice is pretty easy. I'm just going to end the turn there. Uh, because I don't want to lose any more army strength. Um, so, yeah, that was a quick one. Um, ouch. So turn ends, and we go to the next one. Now, uh, we don't have to do the Burgundy Loyalty check, uh, but we do need to do a random event. So let's see what happens there. Please give me some re reinforcements. Nope, we got bad weather in the Alps. Um, so that affects the Swiss Confederation and Alpine Passes. Not a huge deal there. And then we go to my operations phase. My first operation must be an attack against this army. So, yeah, let's do it. I'll show you how that goes. It did not go well. Um, I, yeah, boy, this is tough. I think I have to use my Tercios here. It's my last Tercios point, and I think I have to use it because I have to beat this army. In order to win the game, I don't think... It's just going to get worse and worse for me the longer I'm bogged down against this army. So um, I can re-roll all dice... Um, and I think I'm gonna have to do it. Let's use the let's use the Tercios final Tercios point. Um, now, incidentally, you can get Tercios points back if you go to Tyrol, but at this point, I'm not making it over here because we've got a giant army in the way. So we're gonna re-roll my attack and let's see how that goes. This one went a lot better. Two hits to the coalition army. We got a five and a six pair here, and we got a six and six pair here. So those are my two hits. The coalition army is rolling seven dice. There's three, three, okay, and hopefully I just needed them to not get two hits. I think the odds are pretty bad, but that's why you play the game. They got 
zero hits. That is incredible. So uh, what, a, what a victory from the Duke of Alba. What a victory. So we don't lose any strength from the Spanish army. We eliminate this coalition army, which is fantastic. Um, and now we have a second operation. Um, and I think... I think the correct answer here is that my second operation is to uh, take a move while I've got it into Lorraine. I am now behind enemy lines, essentially, um, and it is going to be tricky to be able to, to move from Lorraine to Flanders. However, however, um, I will at least successfully make it. Now, the way the game works is there's a victory point system in the game. So... Uh, as you can see, you know, for each level of strength, you get a certain number of VPs. Uh, for each Spanish road marker you've placed, if you can create a contiguous row of Spanish road markers, that'll give you some extra bonus VPs. And then for each successful battle or siege that you've accomplished, you get VPs. You also get negative VPs for enemy armies still on the map. And then based on how many VPs you've scored, that determines the level of victory that you've achieved. So making it to uh, Flanders is just half the goal, basically. But I feel like I'm in a pretty good position here. Now, the reason I am choosing to move from Franche-Comte to Florain is that I do not want to get uh, basically defeated by this coalition army. I'm fine with it still being on the map if it means that I can build some Spanish road, if I can, um, uh, if I can make it to Flanders. And I should, uh, by the way, mark how many points I have. I've done one successful siege, and I've actually done two successful battles. Uh, I have actually three successful battles. I defeated this Protestant army, this Swiss army, and uh, this coalition army. Um, so I'm actually at f four points right now uh, for just the battles um, and sieges that I've done. The rest will calculate at the end. Um, okay, so that was my turn. I defeated the coalition army in Franche-Comte. I moved to Lorraine, and uh, let's see where this... Uh, coalition army in Switzerland is headed, shall we? It rolls a one. That is going to send it hot on my tail to... Uh, wait, no. That is going to send it down here to Savoy. So it's moving the wrong way. Maybe it got some intel that I was working on the Spanish road and when it came to intercept me, find out that I'm not there. I've moved along, along the way. In any case, I feel pretty good about my position. So that's the end of the turn. And I have to think about what I'm doing now. Okay, so I may be living dangerously here, but the very first thing I did was I laid siege to the fortress in Lorraine to take it. That meant expending three points of army strength from the Spanish army. So I'm one strength point away from losing the game. Uh, but I felt that that was a better option than uh, rolling five dice versus the fortress's six, because I think that, well, yeah, I just thought that was, a, I'd rather take the sure thing right now. Now, the question I have now is what is my second operation i could try and get reinforcements but it's actually impossible to succeed right now because i am one two three spaces away from lombardy and you need to roll three or more and that would be minus three to the die roll um i guess it would actually be minus two because i have a spanish road marker i think let's see no it would actually literally just be minus three so i actually cannot get reinforcements here so i think the next best thing i'm going to try and do is um build the spanish road um in uh alsace lorraine and that is going to be, uh, I need a three or more, but it's going to be minus one. So let's see if I can do it. I need a four or better. And I got a five. Uh, so that will allow me to place a Spanish road marker. Actually, I just flipped this over uh, here in Lorraine. Um, so that's two Spanish road markers on the map now. If I can get one more, my reinforcements, uh, it, it helps my reinforcements a little bit. However... I think next turn, I'm going to make a dash for Flanders. It's going to be difficult uh, because it's a minus three to that movement um, because of the logistics value. So I would need to roll minus three. However, I have two Spanish road markers. So it'll be minus one. So I would just need to roll a four or higher. It's 50-50. I think I can do it. Um, yeah. So let's see where the uh, coalition army down here is going to go. They rolled a one. That means they are going to come up this way to Franche-Comte. And now I'm a little scared because if I don't make it this turn, we're going to lose the game probably because I'm not going to beat him with three dice, almost assured. Okay, we are 
uh, how many weeks into the campaign? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're in week eight, the end of the second month. Um, interesting. R route to Flanders secured. I'm curious what that space on the map is. Ah, what this is telling you is it it's five bonus points for um, having a full route of Spanish road markers from Flanders to Lombardy. We're not going to do that this time, but... Uh, you know, that's just a reminder for that. Okay, so um, we need to go to the random events table. Let's see what we get. We rolled a five, Revolt in the Holy Roman Empire. Again, that would be you roll a die for each army in uh, Lower Palatinate, Württemberg, or Baden. We don't have any of that. The coalition, the last coalition army is chasing us up sort of eastern France. So now <laughs> it is my turn. Um, and I'm going to try and move. I just need a uh, four or higher in order to move into Flanders. I rolled a six. We are going to successfully enter Flanders, and I believe uh, that that will end the game. Pretty sure that's going to end the game. I don't believe, it doesn't matter if the enemies move, and I don't believe I would get a second operation because I don't think that I can, uh, I don't think I can build Spanish Road in the square start or end spaces. So I'm going to assume, I guess conceivably I could try and roll for uh, reinforcements, maybe. Um, I, it's unclear whether you get your second operation once you reach Flanders. Um, I don't even know if I can do it. I'm four spaces away, and I'm getting... One, two... One, two... Three... Yeah, four spaces away, so that's minus four. There's nothing to offset that, so I can't actually get any more reinforcements. So, yeah. Um, all right, so uh, let's calculate my victory points. So... Um, for each level of the Spanish army's strength, I get two VP. So we're we're at four because of battles and sieges we've won. So we get two more because I have one strength point remaining. That's about 15, 10 to 15,000 men. Um, we get two points for each Spanish road marker on the map. So we've got one down here in Savoy and one up here in Lorraine. So one, two, one, two. We're at 10 points. Um, we got the, if we have three Spanish road markers placed in a row, we get two bonus points and we get five bonus points if we get four in a row. And then we've got our successful battles and sieges which we're already calculating. However, we get negative four victory points for each coalition army still on the map. So we are at 10, we're going to go to six. And what that tells us is it is a minor victory. Your soldiers barely arrive in time to support the war effort against the United Provinces offensive. Is it enough? Due to your laziness and hesitance, the conflict remains unresolved. Um, so as you can see, lots of replayability here in terms of like trying to go for a better score. I felt like um, I would had a bunch of stuff go against me in sort of the middle of the of the game, right in this area. I, I felt like I had a really good, like I was doing really well. I got the Spanish road built in Savoy. I was about ready to try and go. And then as soon as I failed that roll with the attrition to try and get to the Swiss Confederacy, I uh, that's when things started to go downhill. I rolled the revolt at the worst possible time. I would have had another um, Spanish road marker there. Um, so yeah, so that's the game. Um, you just witnessed a playthrough of the Spanish road. I think it's a, a really fun little game. Um, it, uh, congratulations to the designer, Daniel Hernandez Iniesta, um, for, for getting this out. This is a Niels Johansson map, by the way, which I, if you've played any of his other games, you can tell immediately his color palette, his style. Um, what I really like about this, I so I'm not a big solo gamer. I actually don't like solo games. I think they're kind of boring. What I think is cool about this game, and, and why I actually really enjoyed this, was all of the decision-making is in the player's hands. So there are tough decision points, um, as you are playing the game, like, do you try and get reinforcements? Do you try and build the road? Do you try and f fight off the enemy armies? Which space do you move to? Um, and there's enough sort of chaos with the army movement that it kind of, like, makes you have to assess risk. And the die rolls aren't very straightforward in the sense that, like, you know, one, you might really need one, but the odds are lower on it. And so that sort of tr value trade off of, okay, am I going to do this even though it's more likely to fail versus I'll do the thing I less want to do even though it's more likely to succeed. All of that like works together really nicely to create a really interesting decision space. You've got basically four different things you can do on your turn, but you can only do two actions. So you're really choosing from like a limited uh, number of things. The routes you choose to take, whether or not you make those moves across, you know, from these logistics things, whether you can outmaneuver the armies coming after you or beat them in combat. Um, the fact that you have these tercios who are... Um, 
you know, really powerful. It can have really big game changing effects based on what you're trying to do, but you only get a certain number of them. You know, the decision to try and maybe take a detour to Tyrol uh, at the beginning of the game to build Spanish Road there and to make it more likely that your reinforcements come when you need them. Um, there's a lot of really like cool decision making in this, and I can see it being very, very replayable, even if you use the same leader over and over. But again, what I think is genius about this is that this game is set across such a wide swath of time that you're really representing different campaigns by different leaders. So, you know, um, I chose the Duke of Alva, who's good at battle, and I think that really saved my ass because I was getting armies in the way all the time. But you know, you might go for a more siege-heavy strategy with Spinola. You know, he's less good at battle, but he's really good at assaulting fortresses. And so if you, you know, want to make your way up this way, you know, through the fortresses, uh, he would be good to have. And then, of course, you know, if you want to do someone who's not good at battle or sieging, but he gets an extra tercio point. Um, I think this is actually the most genius part of the game is picking your leader at the start and how that will influence the campaign you're going to run. Um, this is a great little game. Um, you know, as someone who doesn't like solo games, I could definitely see myself bringing this with me on trips, um, you know, just to see it. I mean, a narrative definitely emerges from this, which is like saying quite a bit, given that, you know, the map is what, 10 spaces, you're rolling some dice and for like random events, and you've got basically a handful of counters. Um, there's a really rich narrative here. And I think that's like awesome that the mechanics really uh, bring that out. So if, if this looks interesting to you, um, you know, check out the Spanish road. Uh, in C3I number 37, the magazine is out now. This comes with the magazine, all the counters, the map, everything you need to play it uh, is in the magazine. And it's a fun little game. Um, this is going to be maybe one of my go-to travel games, like when I'm traveling for work and I you know, have an hour to kill in a hotel or whatever it is, I'm at lunch, whatever. Um, this is, you know, this is really cool. Um, so I'm really happy that this came with the game. Um, and congratulations again to the designer for getting this published. Um, yeah, this is, this is fantastic. Um, and yeah, and let me know what you thought. Um, this is kind of a more extended playthrough than I'm used to doing, but obviously the game scale is a, and scope is a little bit smaller, so we're able to see the moment-to-moment -moment action. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, if you have played it, let me know what you think, um, or what you think of the playthrough, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.